This is IBM Museum. In this video, I have a subject that preempted um, the topic I was going to be working on. Um, that's just awaiting a little bit more details. We've made some discoveries on that. I'm, um, it's actually going to be in the, in the case where I'm going to go through a, diff a few different machines up on the bench just to kind of demonstrate um, one aspect of, of that topic. But the system I have on the bench right now, and that's not going to be part of that other topic, um, this does have the uh, extended CMOS, even uh, an extended CMOS of 8 KB. Just an amazing amount, a little, and a little chip that's on the planer. But um, this is an IBM PS2 P70, and that's for the um, portable aspect. It's viewed as the, the portable version of the Model 70 based on a 386 DX CPU, just like the Model 70 uh, when it came out, you know, 16 megahertz and 20 megahertz uh, models. And that orange plasma screen is not lit, beautiful orange plasma screen, um, because I do have the output going to external video. Now, the keyboard that's there in the tray. I mean, I've got where it does have some um, cable that can play out for that, but um, I'm still trapped. I can't have the keyboard up on its tender in front of me. I, uh, I don't have the, the type of connectors that that uses with that keyboard uh, to, to really take it too far from where it is currently. And I'll just go through and turn around on the bench anyway because I'm, I'm running through. Now, the other aspect you'll notice is that that um, diskette um, over there on that right-hand side, I've got the, um, and I've got in front of the unit the uh, cover and, the, and that assembly that swings out that diskette drive. And as very typical... The diskette drive is is bad. I mean, I had to go through there and I swapped in my little go-to unit. That's it's from um, a style very similar, not the exact part number, uh, but very similar uh, physically to the diskette drive that's on the PS2 Model 40 L. Uh, excuse me, the PS2 L40 SX. Um, that being that laptop that we've seen in previous videos. Um, it's a 34-pin drive that has the power and data on these units, and it's very, very common that the, the diskette drives that are in these just fail. Um, but since it's 34-pin, I can plug in that little uh, adapter after I went through, and there's a there's a little bit of process that is documented um, on, um, you know, Lewis Olin, diagrammed all that out, gave instructions and has little pictures of how to do that years ago um, to, to get that, those diskette comp drive components out of there to be able to replace the diskette drive. Uh, it's not very, a very involved process. But I went through um, just to kind of show, uh, I mean, you can't really see the stack from the floor, but I do have ultimately three other um, model P70s there, you know, on the floor. I've got some of the cases and the, and this is very, the, the back cover of this one that's up on the bench right now uh, removed um, just because I wanted to kind of expose in that area and just make sure that it's complete and everything. I didn't bring up a, a fifth P70 that I have, um, and I have the, the keyboard um, disassembled from it. It's very simple disassembly, and I'll have to investigate that unit more when I have time just to see why I have it apart, what I was working on maybe at that time. But the, um, the, of the, and this is of course the fourth unit that I went through and, and tested, and um, 
there's a reason I, I left it on the bench, even though I would have had to replace the diskette drive on any of the other models anyway. But of the three on the that are stacked on the floor here, uh, two of those powered up. Um, there's one of those that I tested right in the middle that um, the second one I tested didn't power on. Uh, no evidence of life. I'll have to examine that one. Uh, what I did notice for opening up the back, the first thing I tested is really interesting. It looks like it's got about 32 megabyte of, um, of RAM on it. It's got a, a memory adapter uh, by Intel. I've got other ones of those. Um, it must be a 32-bit version um, because just to be able to reach that. Um, on all the ints I have, I've seen where the the SIM sockets are, are populated on the board, and that's very common because I've got a lot of those 2 megabyte, 85 nanosecond um, SIMs, 72 pin SIMs that are really common for the uh, MAL 70s and, of course, the P70 units, um, as well as some of the other units for uh, expansion, uh, um, memory expansion adapters, and things like that. So I've got a few of those, and I went through at some point in time and populated all those. The other thing I noticed is this got, I've got some fairly interesting CPUs on, on stuff. Uh, bug, moth. <laughs> um, it's landed now, so I hope it doesn't light off again. Um, so, I mean, they had, um, I was seeing a Cyrix CPU in the, in the first unit I tested. Uh, the, one that is the units that, that's dead, it has a CPU that it's probably Cyrix uh, underneath, but it almost looked like a, a finger adapter for one of the AMD, later AMD um, CPUs. It's on top of that, and it's in a 386DX paintout or form factor, you know. Um, but it has a, a little assembly on top of that, and even a heat sink or a couple of little heat sinks stuck off the side. Um, and I'll have to look over. There's going to be a video later on where I look these units over more in detail. Uh, this is a quick video to get something running um, that I can use for the topic tonight. Now, this fourth unit that I have up, it doesn't have any strange CPU on there. It looks like, in fact, it looks like an older, um, you know, black print 386DX um 20 megahertz and i've got a math coprocessor in there too that's something that i have pretty common around and a lot of time i put those in place on the malls a few of the malls on the are excuse me a, a probably one or two of the malls on the floor i think there's one that didn't have the um the flowing point 387 dx in there but you know uh the i think the other two did and um so this unit, um, it's actually pretty clean for all that. And I just pulled these out um, and I didn't, um, some of these, and I think this one was in a case and I'll explain the cases when I go over things uh, later as well. I do have the, um, the Hartman cases and this unit was in the, the fabric case I have and um, it was the only unit that was that was actually in a case, and that's likely why it was so clean inside. And then I had the leather case, and I put one unit into the to transport it up here. And I even have the, um, and I'll go through and scan this. I thought I put it in one of the pockets. And then zipped it. Close, oh yeah. So here I have the, the reference um, diskette for the P7386. And um, that was the other worry that that uh, these have the bigger Panasonic style. The same thing as, same battery style as on the um, for the MAL70. Um, and I've been, again, I've been finding those on Amazon uh, brand new in blister packs for four dollars a piece real good uh, value but i was really worried about a battery being worn down uh 
because I thought if I got bad diskette drives, how do I run a reference diskette on them too? And I would have loved to have an adapter on this unit for an aspect of the uh, the system information tool. That is going to be the topic that we're going to run the system information tool on this unit tonight. Um, you know, apologize. It's going to just going through the that system information tool routine um, and you know I promise later later on in videos I'm we're going to look inside these we're going to look um, more in depth and how to repair certain aspects or certain um, um, functionality of these units um, the first unit I examined I, I talked about where it having a lot of RAM memory and it actually has Windows 95 loaded on it. And that might be even interesting to see. Um, you know, I saw it pop up in the testing. Of course, I couldn't get into the diskette drive. Um, I may go through and, you know, put a functional diskette drive on there uh, and have that be the unit that we looked over. Of course, it's got a memory expansion adapter in there, as I said, the by Intel um, that... Um, will undoubtedly run the system information tool or some other aspects. I've also loaded the UNPC um, programs onto the system, even though we're not going to cover those tonight. Um, I just wanted, when I had a functional diskette drive on the unit, I wanted to just load it in. And um, so we'll get looking at those units. Get, we'll get the, you know, the units rotate around, look at uh, under the back cover, and um, at that later point. But, um, you know, we've got the setup now to where I can go through and do the system information tool. And, of course, I've been sitting here talking for 12 minutes um, leading into that. Now, this unit, and I'll go through and I'll move the webcam out of the way so I can get a little bit in closer to the keyboard. Um, this unit, as the, you see the yellow label, here, uh, it says, and you can't really see it from your aspect, IBM Boulder 1990 inventory. So this evidently was um, a machine at, um, at IBM at some point, or used by IBM internally. And um, I have no idea where I, uh, well, actually I have one idea where I got one of the systems. Um, and that was one of the units that powered up just by the, the name of in one of the directories that came up. So I, I know what one of those is. Um, but I have no idea otherwise of the origins of, the, uh, of these units. Um, and if you've been counting, I mean, the four that I have here, one that doesn't power up, the other three do, the other three have bad diskette drives. The one I've still got to pull out that's partially disassembled and assumably doesn't work or some other aspect of why I was into it before, but we'll see. I mean, if you've been counting, that's five P70s. And a lot of people are going to say, wow, wow. <laughs> I mean, and I probably paid uh, appropriate value at the time that I picked those up particularly for the one deal I did with the, where the, I know what, where one originated from, and there could have been others in that batch as well. And you t these tend to be the machines that you don't see offered up for sale so much because the people that have them keep them. You know, they, they, uh, they're sought after when they're found, they're quickly bought. Um, I have no idea of what current market value would be for a P70 Maybe somebody can chip in the comments or they've seen some recent sales. Um, on another note, and it looks very same from the front, you only see it from the width aspect. Um, I have the big brother of the P70 uh, as well. And that's called the P75. And that's based on the 46DX CPU. has a CPU card in there. And some of those are modified that you can go through and uh, these fabulous engineers out there and can desolder um, the uh, 
soldered in place 486 DX CPU that's ceramic and put in a uh, in that little tiny space that that has for that CPU card um, can put in a faster processor um, and I will show those as well um, the width is they have the capability for more micro channel adapters within there and of course um, they're set up more for more memory is possible from the um, on the planer and you don't need so many adapters for that anyway so um, but I have four of those units and they are all closed up uh, it looks like that they're in clean condition um, I'll go through those and check those at at the, the time um, now for this unit I did not have to um, and let's go through and let's get the screen up that we're on and I think this one just has um, it just has DOS really it's it's one of the and one of the other units I saw besides the Windows 95 model um, it just seemed like it had basic DOS as well the um, and then the, that one Windows 95 model that was loaded up pretty much um, that somebody's really expanded that I don't think that was necessarily me but um, as put that machine in uh, in very nice condition with the with the OS um, and I talked about the um, aspect of uh, the the writing the, the reference diskette. The other aspect I was worried about is those flat batteries. And I did see this one briefly flash up. I didn't change any dates and times yet. Um, but this is the date that um, that the one gave me. Um, you know, it doesn't really even matter, but the time, what it thinks it is. Um, and that's a little bit important because sometimes when the batteries go flat, they, once you power them on, they start from kind of like the midnight of whatever day that they think it is. Um, and this is a, a date that's been set and the clock is just lost track over time so badly. Lost those 19 years somewhere. It sounds like a little bit of my life. You know, lost 19 years somewhere. Um, but the other system I saw had a date of 1997. So I'm glad that these had batteries that who cares of what time and date it is. But I didn't have to run through the reference diskette to run a configuration. And um, so now I have the ability probably one by one to go through. And I may have to check the... I'm accessing the diskette drive from this front connection. It may be possible just for me to go at the back of the machine, open up the back cover, and actually bypassing um, so I don't have to get into the diskette, just to get a diskette, um, you know, that's the drive that's working in the, from the connector that's on the planer. Access from that back panel is, is a lot easier to do. And I even thought about there's a, on the P70, there is a, a, a connector for external diskette, um, you know, 37 pin, a little adapter. And we've seen that before when I went over the external diskette drives and I showed it on the screen. I thought about pulling up the, uh, pulling out my external 4869-001 um, diskette, external diskette drive. It works and plugging it in there and having a B drive. Uh, but that would probably, one, it might have upset the reference um, or the configuration of the machine where I'd have to run the reference diskette. The other aspect is I, you know, even though this, the system information tool would fit on a uh, 360 KB uh, diskette, I don't have it on there. And I'd have to pull out the MOL 30 and connect up the... Uh, 4869 external drive and copy over floppy over that and I have enough of those those five and a quarter diskettes but that had been another path that I would have done and I just thought well it's just easier getting my go-to uh, diskette drive and all of you are saying David quit wasting time 
uh, you're just chattering on, you're not getting into running the system information tool. Now, this is the patched version, what we consider the patched version by Major Tom. And he's gone in there for um, one of the aspects of the uh, data streaming support and found the bug with the original set and, and went through there, changed that, and then there's one string in there that was reported. It was uh, missing a space, and he went through and corrected that. And I'll show that information up on the, the screen a little bit more and where you can get the system information tool. Now, I say that the system information tool, I may have to go through this one time again on the P70. And it's for this reason. I knew this going into the uh, this video just based on the study and looking at what Major Tom has done for, for um, dumping out those um, supported models that, that, uh, that IBM, you know, that that work under the system information tool. And uh, it's uh, hit and miss a little bit on the, for the supported models on some of the early PS2s or the lower level like the 286 based units are totally unsupported. Um, but the, um, that is the, the, the bug, another bug that we're aware of here that the P70 actually has effectively four Microchannel slots. Um, the plasma display board is one of those, as well as the DBA ESDI drive, the hard drive, um, and the and the the DBA ESDI drive is slot four, just like it is with the Mole 50Z, the Mole. 70s, the the 55 SX uh, that we've also done the sit on, and um, typically the system information tool is masking out, and it has the number of adapters of that unit hard coded in, and it masks out the uh, it doesn't go through for that slot four for the DBA ESDI drive on a lot of the malls even that it supports. Who knows? I I don't know why IBM kind of has that hidden away, the hard drive. They have other aspects that you can see what the how the hard drive is configured, but they mask it out from being identified as a slot. But there are, on the P70, there are two slots. The upper slot is a 32-bit microchannel adapter. We'll see that at a point when we have the machine rotated around in a later video. And there's a lower slot that is a 16-bit adapter. Very cramped in there, and it's only possible for those two adapters and certain lengths of adapters, too. And you have the CPU. Uh, if you have a little bit more involved CPU, like uh, like the Cyrix I'm talking about with a, a higher-profile heat sink, that's a problem for the lower slot. Uh, the SIMs are down. The planar SIMs are down in those locations. We'll see that in later videos. But it does have the two slots. And one of the bugs that we just saw drop out when Major Tom isolated that information, and I'll pull up that page in a moment, is that the system information tool just says slot one. And I, I assume it's talking about the first slot. I mean, it wouldn't be talking about the slot number two. They wouldn't uh, have, uh, you wouldn't think that they'd ma go through and mask out uh, slot one. And I'm trying to remember the layout. Um, I'm, I think the upper slot, the 32-bit slot, is, uh, is slot number one. Um, and then maybe slot number two is a lower 16-bit. And then the upper um, plasma display adapter is, uh, is slot three. And then that DBA ESDI drive is slot four. So I don't have any adapters in this. You know, clearly, like I said, if I couldn't run a reference diskette, once I got a functional diskette drive on it, I just, I loaded the system information tool and the UMPC to the hard drive. So, you know, if we had a supported adapter, 
and I'll, I'll bring up that uh, page later on as well, it would give the information. This is going to be a bug that Major Tom is looking at, and he says, well, I'll go through and I can correct that. So we'll get to see system information tool maybe later on um, when it has uh, lists the at least the two adapters that are present, if not more. And um, we can run through that again. We can maybe have in, since I'll have a diskette drive, they'll be working on whatever unit at that point. Uh, I can go through and run through the reference diskette on them as well. So the hard drive by um, my drive letter, logical drives installed, drive C, that DBA ESDI drive, and this is a 60 megabyte ESDI, DBA ESDI drive. And that's pretty common for the, for the P70. Hard disk by, dry, uh, by device number. Yeah, like I say, a, what they're considering a 60 megabyte even though it's uh, 58 when it gets all translated out there okay the partition table probably one big partition as I said I think it's just DOS basic DOS that's on here like a version 6 did we see that maybe and then the diskette drive goes through and spins that working diskette drive I have there, identifying it as the 1.44 megabyte, of course. Okay, keyboard information. It'll be interesting to see later on. Um, I guess this doesn't show the keyboard ID, and I think it's slightly different. It may be the same as a, uh, the 101 key keyboard of the Model M like other PS2s would have. But the standard things, the 101, 102 key keyboard supported, get type, type of matic rate supported, get type of matic, uh, set type of matic rate supported, and return to default type of matic rate supported. And it's an odd connector for that keyboard. And it does have one PS2 port uh, that's accessible from... Um, the back panel there's a little cover that's that's uh by the way this is the back panel you have your ac power goes in here under this door this door closes um but then you have more um you can open this bigger door this is the mouse where the mouse connector would be that ps2 port this is for that external diskette drive connector that's square. They call it a hosedin connector. Let's open up the this. Okay, and it, it actually identifies, and so it did con kind of confirm me being correct. This is where the serial and parallel ports, which, it, which is which, they're both DB25. Uh, that'd be very um, evident by the connector style. You have the VGA, external VGA here. Of course, we've got external VGA connected right now. Um, so no orange plasma display. And it identifies that this top slot as one. So that's the 32 bits uh, micro channel adapter that would be here beneath the cover. And the two, the lower slot, and it's actually inverted um, so that effectively the top of the adapter is lower it nestles over things because that bus adapter the riser is going right down the middle between these two adapters and that is slot number two on the p70 and so that's the the basic layout of that continuing on memory information Memory hardware, system board memory modules installed. This uh, system is not supported. It's not going to go through and split out, tell us what um, SIMs can be on the planer. Typically, for the 72-pin SIM sockets that are on these, just like the, the Model 70, 
it's the one megabyte or two megabyte um, SAMs that are 85, 85 nanosecond. Memory values. We've got four of those two megabyte SIMs in place, so we've got eight megabyte of um, of uh, RAM on the system. And let's see. And then for memory mapping, just that layout. Kind of be very standard with the um, as the MOL 70 would be. Miscellaneous technical information. Second interrupt chip is present. Real time clock is present. Wait on external event is unsupported. Extended BIOS data area is allocated. System has a microchannel bus. DMA supports 24-bit address space keyboard functionality call supported return pos data call is unsupported return memory map call is unsupported enable disable processor functions call unsupported 8042 keyboard controller in system data streaming is unsupported that's that little patch that uh, Major Tom did. SCSI subsystem is not present on the system board. Information panel is not installed. This is not an IML system. SCSI support is not in the IML image. Mouse information. I'm not loading a mouse driver. I do have a mouse um, connected to that port in the back, but it doesn't have the driver loaded. Not in this one. Okay, operating system information. Yeah, DOS version 6.22. MS-DOS from Microsoft. And I think that this just had the basic DOS um, on the drive, not really much else. Just looked like a system that somebody's going to build up. Model and processor information. Okay, so it identifies it correctly. This is a supported machine. Model and processor information, machine name, IBM PS2 Model P70. Processor 80386DX style on this um, system. The speed is at 20 megahertz. Um, a lot of time that's hard coded. Um, I'm fairly certain that this is a 20 megahertz system. Coprocessor, the 80387DX is uh, connected on there. So the model, the F8, and that's that those 386SX or above, you know, IBM always identified those as the F8 model, BIOS submodel, or BIOS model, excuse me. The submodel is 0B. BIOS revision, 0, 1, I mean, excuse me, 0, 0. And I think all these, and I'll have to look through to see if there's later BIOS versions. I was just at a glance in these four units, it looked like they had all the same BIOS version. Two EEPROM chips. Um, I will go through and I will uh, read those with my EEPROM reader um, tomorrow get them up online and uh, if they're not there already I'm not aware of anything but I'll have to look we may have those dumped already the P70 being it was a little bit more desired system there was a little bit more involvement and I know of the the one engineer that really got into for the P70 and the P75 um, he cop he you know he dumped a lot of those um, those EEPROMs for the BIOS, and since he had those models, then, um, you know, there's a good chance that he um, got the BIOS before, but I'll, I'll go through and kind of look that up. I didn't really scan through that information tonight. Uh, 
But it is helpful to know that, you know, it's got the initial BIOS on this, and that BIOS ROM date of the 18th of January, 1989, and um, making this unit more than 32 years old, that BIOS version more than 32 years. Um, and the system board POS ID or the planar ID is FFAF. Okay. Parallel and serial port information, of course, the system information tool just lists the number of the serial ports and parallel ports. And one of each, like a lot of the PS2 models. SCSI information. SCSI is not present on this machine. Video information. Nothing, just beep. And of course, it's got that plasma adapter. We're using external video. Um, all intents and purposes, that is um, VGA as we see it here. Um, but it doesn't identify anything for that uh, video information. So. That is the system information tool on the P70. There will undoubtedly be much more um, videos that I'll have showing a little bit more details of these units. Um, and also the Big Brother, the P75, running this system information tool on it at some point. Um, and We'll run it again. We're you know once that that maybe that we get the correct amount of adapters, and I don't know why. Just a bug, kind of silly to go through and just say it has one adapter slot in these circumstances. That's not even suppressing some of the adapter uh, slot information or adapters that could be there uh, on the planer for functionality. But um, that's a, just a bug of saying one instead of maybe three or I don't know. But um, more to come. So if you en enjoyed this video, click on that like button. If um, you want to see a lot more content like this, click on that subscribe button. Please get more. Let's get more people, more subscribers to my channel, more people watching uh, to see this sort of content. But that is all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.